Right, are we on? Hello again. Hey, hello. Say hello to this one. Lucky, come this way. Lucky, 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 lucky. Excuse me. Say hello. Excuse me. No, she's, she's just too busy. No, I'm not going to say hello. Not today. So, look, I didn't want to make this a weekly feature. I'm not going to make this a weekly feature, but um, I did get a bit of good feedback from last week's video. So I thought I'll just do one more walk in the dog because, well, for like somebody asked, they said, where's the bash cast? They've noticed that my podcast has been a little bit absent. And yes, it has. And there is a reason for that. Lucky, come on. Where have you found? There is a reason for that. Now you're twisting my lead. Thank you very much. And that is, um, we're in a period of transition where we're trying to figure out this sort of new way of communicating, but also new, what we're giving away. And as a result of that, there has been a bit of a break from it. And whilst we're in that break, why not go walking with the doggle? I'm actually en route to pick the kids up, but we'll sort of simultaneously pick the kids up. First half will be without the kids. Will I be able to even concentrate enough to talk in the second half with the kids? We will see. So... Uh, yeah, I mean, the Bashcast will return, but it's like, how much do we give away? Because previously, how we've always worked, sort of uh, the raise and debtor of being, we're not going to lift the ladder up and protect it all for ourselves. We're going to talk to people. And look at that view, by the way. Look at that view. That's Worcestershire right behind you. They're amazing today. And then you've got um, the sunset there. That church there, I know... The arches is meant to be fictional, but that is the church that the arches were set in and all this area around in Worcestershire. So there you go. So, and the dog is still tangling me up. It's like, what do we share? Because we used to have this thing with, okay, let's come up with an idea. Let's test it. And then let's explain our theory, our model, and our input data sources. Those are the three things that you kind of have to get right in professional betting, in data modeling and data analytics. And so then we would just do this and we would explain it. And if you asked a question, we would answer the question, right? And then we became sort of a victim of our own success because, you know, 2015, 16, we worked on this horse racing tracker. Then we released it and a lot of people made a lot of money and bam, 2023, somebody else releases exactly the same horse racing tracker and what we realize is that you know it was cloned and some people joined our site and took advantage of our good nature by asking us how everything worked and like idiots we answered them and then they just cloned it and copied it and resold it lucky try not to drag so much please thank you very much look at that i'm gonna fall over lucky see that field down there oh no you can't see it from up here because it's behind those trees she broke into there and chased sheep around last week for like 15 minutes non-stop and I couldn't get her back. And I was, I was just waiting for the crack of the farmer's gun. But it, I didn't hear it. I was very lucky. That was a lucky escape for lucky. Wasn't lucky. So we learned our lesson there. Our good nature, you know. I remember the, the person, let's just call them OP, who was in charge of copying it, said, um, you know, copying our tracker was innovation, my friend. I'll tell you this, as somebody who was in academia, postgraduate academia for seven years, went to a fair few international conferences, sort of, oh, I had a few undergraduate and postgraduate students that I was looking after in research and development, 80,000 word thesis, a lot of time spent in the library. And then I was part of a asset management innovation team as I was a consultant for the government in Westminster before I decided to jack all that in because it wasn't interesting enough and went to be a professional gambler. Let me tell you this, what you did was the opposite of innovation. You took something and then you gave it, you know, a different coat of paint and then resold it. It's like, it's like whatever the opposite of innovation is in the dictionary. That is what innovation is. Oh, lucky, didn't see that doggy behind. So, um, hey, 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 just here, by the way, we have, we have the stone, we have, is it the Mulvans 
over there. And then the Cotswolds just over there. You can see in the, in the background. That's the moon, which nobody flew to in the 1960s. And this is lucky. And that's some people in the quietness of where I am that are just over there. How's that possible? So I'm just going to keep my voice down a little bit for doing it. Anyway, so that's the innovation. Like, um, we learned our lesson. So now you ask us how we make something. I just want to prove it with results and transparency of data. But I'm not going to talk about how things work. And that kind of changes again the format and the mode about how we run a lot of these videos and podcasts and things like that, you know? It's just like... That's how the environment changes. It's just the natural way of doing it, which is, a sh again, a shame if anyone's interested in probability modeling and things like that. I mean, I get... Uh, you know, right, let's get this off the dog. Can I get this off you before? We're, oh, actually, I wanted to show you this, if you remember. I'm going to do this from afar, out of respect for the family. Oh, and the people are just there, but you see this little grave here with the hulks on it and everything like that? If you remember my podcast, um, it would be three years ago now, 2021, or was it 2022? It was 2022, it was September 2022. The little four-year-old boy who died in the accident. That's his beautiful little headstone there. Always makes me cry when you sort of see the Incredible Hulk. And every time I pick my boy up, who was his close friend, I have to go and have a look at it. And Make sure the hulks are clean and they're played with and my boy and him can have a little chat and a catch up. Now, Lucky, stop. Hey, Lucky, Lucky, I'll let you off the lead if you listen to me. Lucky. Hey, listen to me. You're not listening to me, are you? My gosh. And that'll be the end of her. Oh, <laughs> I thought you were gone. I thought you were gone. Right. Anyway, so, yeah. We'll figure out, and then we've got the closing Discord and then all of the rest of it. But one of the things in the Bashcast which I found quite surprising was I sort of asked people, um, or, or I, got, anyway, I got some feedback from people when I did a particular segment that, that was their favourite segment and they enjoyed it a lot and they wanted it to be a regular segment. And that particular segment was me getting stuff off my chest and it was called, what was that? What was it called, Lucky? Nearly not be of it. It was called Why You're a Prick. Me basically going through all the reasons why you're a prick. And so I thought I did that video last week on, um, you know, the different types of people that I'm finding I'm dealing with just now and that I'm finding it challenging dealing with some of them. Um, but they all have one thing in common, one characteristic in common, and that is that they're pricks. Lucky. Hey, Lucky. Lucky! Lucky! Great recall there. What was that, the fifth ask? Go on. It's so funny when she flies down that hill. You probably don't see how steep that is on camera. But it is hilarious. I wish I had the ball to throw with her. Lucky, go! Go and be a golden retriever. Go and retrieve an invisible ball. Anyway. So why you're a prick? I enjoyed it. So I thought, I'm going to do the why you're a prick for the five different people that are winding me up right now. Okay, so let's just start. We're not gonna linger too much, okay, on the abuser, which is the first one, because of course, you've got the guys. They're mainly just trolls, and I think they're the ones that are just aiming for a reaction when they talk about physical appearance, a bit of mental appearance, that guy's not happy and everything like that. But someone said something to me the other day in terms of like just the abuser, which is like, this was a forum of like 77 people. And one person just said to the other, he has on good authority that I'm an overall loser. Now I didn't know if they meant overall loser in terms of I'm a, you know, I'm a loser or if I'm losing at sports betting, but okay, I'll, I'll take being a loser in terms of no personality or however you want to, to find that it's the maddest thing ever people talking about that you're not a profitable better i mean i've said it about people that i look at in terms of like mush bets and there are certain people i guess it's part of the environment and the game that we're playing just now there are certain people 
who do pretend that they are winning better, pro sports better and stuff like that. But I mean, I had a successful enough career that probably would have paid me more than sports betting. At the time, what that's long term. So at the time, I was earning more from sports betting than I was from my career as a consultant to the government. But the problem is my career with the, as a consultant to the government was very safe and paid a very good pension and had year on year annual increases. To get a year on year annual pay rise just now, I have to do better at sports betting with the same capital than I did do last year, right? So, and, and then there's the pension thing and all of that. So to be an overall loser after the 10 years since I've retired, I'm in, a lot of difficulty and it's an impossible thing to prove without giving people access to my bank account I guess but I used to live with um, some university students when I was in university one of them is now she's a GP she runs the GP practice and GPs work for her and the other one is a doctor who has two PhDs and he's a senior pediatrician um, and goes around conferences talking about his research and then I've got another mate who um, I went to Australia with and he's now, you know, head of Asia for E.ON. And with those people, you can tangibly... They don't have to prove anything. They don't have to prove their status. They don't have to prove their success. And they carry with them sort of an air of um, authority. Um, and nobody would ever turn around to them and go, well, he's not a doctor or she's not a GP or he has never worked in a corporate environment. And yet, just in this thread of 77 people, you just go, well, he's an overall loser, and that's it. I was like, okay, fine. It is what it is, I don't have to prove it. The second prick on why you're a prick is the refund person. They've started getting a little bit bigger recently, let me tell you that, Mr. Refund. They take a few different guises, but I mean, one of the worst was um, somebody that signed up and did two or three weeks using Bucky Bashing and then um, claimed that they were a poor um, person that didn't have any money and didn't have any food to eat and they've done no bets have done nothing but lose since they joined. And so can they have a refund? And you're like, you close your eyes, you roll your eyes like that. They say, Listen, I'm not at liberty to tell you what happened next other than we definitely reached out to the person to make sure that they were okay. But if I talk any more about what, exactly what we did, perhaps there's a danger that there's some exploitation and abuse that can happen for us and I'll, I'll end up being a loser out of the generosity and goodwill of what it is that we do but don't be that guy don't because it's like it's free rolling it's like you sign up and you win well happy days and you sign up and you lose and you get your money back you're, you're gaming the system and there's no there's no winners no, there's no happiness in gaming the system like that you know what I mean um and then we have well can we have a free trial which is just a no because anyone that asks for a free trial, if you give them a free trial, you just know that they're exactly the kind of person that's going to then use the re free trial and then not sign up, but then somehow find another way of signing up for a new, another free trial. You know what I mean? <laughs> so you want to avoid those people and they're becoming quite common or not. And I'm quite happy. It's a little bit akin to like you walk into a restaurant and go, I've never eaten here before. Can I just have some food for free? No. No, why should you? Why should? What, what is it that's entitled? You feel like you're entitled to give something a free trial. Lucky, come over here, please. Lucky, that's a bit close to the road, please. Come to me. Lucky, come to me. Come to me. Come to me. Right, let's get her on the lead just now. Excuse me. Thank you. Good girl. I'm just going to do one more lap before I pick the kids up, okay? So there's the... Um... There's the, you know, the, 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 I've lost the word here. Freeloader? Not freeloader. It's the angle shooter who just wants to like have a free trial or just wants to sign up for a little bit. And if they lose, they're going to ask for their money back. And then there's the people that you just know are going to ask for a refund. And they're generally the people that before they sign up, They've got 140,000 questions. I don't mind answering some of them, but there's the occasional person that you sort of stand around and look and go, I spent 25 minutes on this person yesterday, and I spent 25 minutes on this person the day before, and I'm spending another 25 minutes answering stuff today, 
and in the back of your mind going they're quite it's like at some point what's my time worth in terms of you signing up and then they sign up and they give it a go for two days and then they turn around and go this isn't what i this isn't what you said it was can i have my money back yeah no it actually says very clearly as you sign up that we don't offer refunds because um you could just log on have a look at all our edges angles download all of the data and then ask for a refund again but there is an increase in the number of people asking for a refund don't be one of them the pricks then we have the non analytical people so listen advantage play value betting isn't something that everybody's meant to be an expert in and there is certainly a learning curve that goes along with it at the same time there are those that get their analytics wrong either because they don't do any or they're not transparent with it and one of the worst things and this is on the increase recently i see is that i'm someone will say i'm in a private group that says Bucky Bashy's models are complete bollocks. What am I meant to do with that information? It's such a weaselly way of saying something. You see, if you have some analytical skills, you're more than welcome to come to us and present your data and we'll thank you and we'll work with you. Um, or if you just want to have a conversation of this, you look overly optimistic here, or perhaps the model that is assigning Goals here has a certain amount of under disposition over long time in games that have lower XG or big XG, but that never happens. The general conversation is, I and, and it is never the person, is I know somebody who thinks that the models are bollocks. Or somebody was like looking at all of our lines saying, they're, 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 I know somebody that knows that they're not profitable. The only way you could profit off them is laying them. And you're like, can you hear what you're saying? Sorry, are you saying that if you take this data and only apply a particular betting strategy to it, you're going to profit? Well, there we go. Get those analytical skills in place, my friend. Right, so the second to last one is definitely an increase of the copy and paster. Okay, the guy recently signed up. He signed up. He then took all of the bets for golf and all. Golf's a very common one because it's like 16 a week, but it's often horse racing and things. And just posted it to a free telegram group with hundreds of members. So let's say I put up, you know, Hoshino, Rio Hoshino at 125 to one at this particular bookmaker. And he instantly takes it and sends it to 100 people who then themselves send it probably to an average of seven people each, six or seven people. And instantly in a second, that's gone from one person, at one golfer at one book that's good EV to 700 people getting on that obscure golfer at exactly the same time. What are you doing, Lux? And so we challenged them and said, you're not allowed to do this. And he said, where does it say in your T's and C's that I'm not allowed to do it. And I'm like, just stop doing it. And he argued that he wouldn't, so we served a cease and desist. And then got his lawyers on to us about how our T's and T's are fraudulent. We are fraudulently misrepresenting. We now have to publicly apologize. All of these things, just because we asked him to stop taking our bets and posting them to a large Telegram group for free. And it's not just him. There are people that attempt to scrape the horse racing tracker and then they get blocked by some sort of security system and then they'll turn around and go, what's going on? My, my, my account's blocked. This is absolute, this isn't good enough. A bit like, by the way, the guy that was doing the horse race, the golf tips. We were late one day and we figured out it was him through some sort of entrapment because I said to one person they'll be available at 9.30 p.m. And then he said to his group, oh, they'll be here at 9.30 p.m. So we knew that it was him. We have particular ways of entrapping people and understanding who it is that's doing stuff. But if you're just scraping over and over again with automated software, it's often for the reason of reselling bots to other people. So one account now becomes hundreds of accounts betting on exactly the same horses. So we'll block access for people doing that. And then you'll complain and go, I can't access the site. And you look at the account and it seems to have clicked a mouse on the site 
three times a second, every second for the last two and a half weeks. So it's like, you're saying you're not using any scraping software? Anyway, those people just stop it. Why don't you just pay for a data service and then log on and use it? By the way, look, if I have to turn around again, can you <laughs> and just use it as a single account and stop selling it to other people? For the love of God. <laughs> because we are trying our best to have an eye on sustainability. With, we're trying to, we understand that for every person that signs up, on average, that information will be shared with 1.x people. And it might be higher, it might be higher than 1.x. But we have a rough idea. Um, I mean, it's not like you can sign up and then 33 people around the country are using that account at the same time because there is some IP detection software and God knows I didn't know I was ever going to have to sort of become an expert in any of this stuff and spend money on it. But it's just a fact of the matter that, that we've seen these sort of private Discord groups that go, who wants to share a bookie bashing account? Do you, 25 people can jump in because it's an absolute rip off at the cost of what it is. I am afraid that you can't afford it if you think it's an absolute rip off, but also you're damaging the sustainability because you can't have 700 people betting on Rio Hoshino at the same time. And that's really why you're a prick. And then finally, last but not least, and you gotta love them, is the skeptic. So there is the thing always why I don't tell people that I'm a professional better or I make money out of betting. I often tell people either I'm a stay at home dad or I'm in, I'm in uh, investing because heaven knows if you talk to interesting people, you know, farmers and psychiatrists and GPs and doctors and, um, you know, accountants and anyone that is more interesting, <laughs> anything is more interesting than investors. And I'm in investing, what kind of investing? Numbers, and then they just leave you alone. Um, I prefer a lot of the time I stay at home, Dad, but heaven forbid you have a few drinks and then you accidentally tell people that you're a professional sports better. There's one of two reactions a lot of the time. The first reaction is they've got a mate who's got a system where they back all the favorites and then they blah, 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 in play, do, 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 and you're like, okay. And then the second one are the people that simply don't believe it, including my father-in-law who worked in a bookies for 20 years. And then I met Jen, said what I do, and he didn't believe it. He didn't believe that such a thing existed. Um, but the, the it didn't happen people even happen with something like bookie bashing and you have transparency of data and results, you know, we're talking 100,000 horse racing results and you can still get, but well, I, I haven't made money or I've heard that people can't make money. And you look at it, it's like you bet on six horses and they were all 66 to one. So you, you, are you surprised you didn't make any money? Um, or and this is an honest to God conversation with an anonymous person, but, um, we were talking about a member who made £100,000 plus in a single month recently. I spoke to the member, but not just that, I spoke to the exchange in which he profited. And the exchange in which he profited also independently verified this information themselves on X. And despite all of that, someone turned around and went, in a list of things that never happened, that's quite high on the top of that list. And everybody laughed at the comment. And you stand there going, well, what more can I do? But then this guy is a prick because he belongs in the don't believe it can happen category. Well, guess what? Lots of people don't believe that lots of things can't happen. And if you're not open minded and able to learn, then you'll be left behind. And that is of no qualm to myself. Somebody said something once that um, lots of adults have an inability to learn because of something that is different to children. Children love learning. And you know why? They have no ego. And then you grow up and you have an ego and a lot of people find that their ego can be damaged and hurt if they find, if they think that they don't know everything or they need to learn something. And then they go through life thinking there's nothing that they can be taught. I'm actually thinking of a few examples of people I know in my personal life whilst I stay, say this, and that's okay. You can be closed-minded and suspicious. You can protect yourself. Lucky, come on over here. But the reason these people don't learn, don't want to learn is because their ego is too big and it is stopping them. Remove your ego and admit that there's plenty out there that you don't know and go to counseling and talk to counselors 
and meditate and take psychedelics and grow magic mushrooms and be good to other people and read a book by Simon Boas called The Beginner's Guide to Dying. And maybe, just maybe, you might find that you're a happier, content and more open individual. I'm getting dragged by the puppy right down to the kids school that I've now arrived at so we'll leave it at that. Hope you have a good week.